During this demo, we will focus on how the control points are displayed within the program and how we aim to build explainable results within the MindBridge system. So this is our core platform with the general ledger. On the right-hand side of the screen, we can see all the control points that are out of the box that support this particular analysis. If I go ahead and head into our second tab here, we'll see that any of our subledger analysis also offer the same approach in terms of out-of-the-box control points to support the analysis in terms of how we're looking at the data. To reiterate the MindBridge approach, this is a combination of business rules, statistical models, and machine learning, and each of these control points has a unique weighting. Uh, that weighting is being factored into the overall risk score of each transaction and entry within the system. Uh, the way MindBridge aims to present these high, medium, and low risk transactions is by classifying them uh, based off of that underlying risk score. So high risk is greater than 50% risk, medium is between 30 and 50%, and low is less than 30% risk. Essentially, what we're doing here is we're separating out what's common and reoccurring within your client system based off of those underlying patterns. The medium risk is the more complex entries that are not seen elsewhere. However, these still fit into the more typical business process within the organization. And then the high risk are the anomalies and the most extreme outliers that are not seen elsewhere within this data set. In terms of explainability, we're able to drill down into the data table, which will give us the higher risk transactions. Uh, when we drill down into a high risk transaction, that will bring up the debits and credits associated with the entry, as well as all of the control points being triggered. In terms of the control points, these are sorted from high to low risk. And a couple of things that we can indicate is some have an X, some have a check. These are your binary yes or no questions. And then the more complex statistical models and the machine learning is on a low, medium, and high scale. And the reason for that is if it is an unusual amount, how unusual of an amount is it? If it is a rare flow, how rare of a flow is it? So having the scale from zero to 100% helps us indicate this is extremely rare, or this is moderately rare, or this is frequently seen. As we indicated earlier, this is the ensemble approach where all these tests are performed simultaneously. And if we wanted to understand a little bit more about which particular areas of this transaction are affected by which control points, we can select that control point. So for example, if I want to see the cash expenditure, here's the cash account where the cash expenditure control point was being triggered. If I want to see which line item was triggering the suspicious keyword, in this case, we've got two line items associated with the suspicious keyword. So this is another way that we're aiming to help build a profile around each transaction within your data set. To give you that added visibility and augment your judgment on how it will affect your financial statements. In addition to being out of the box, there is the ability to configure these control points. So in the engagement settings, as we head into the general ledger, we can see our risk scores here where we can see all the control points and the weightings assigned to these control points. What we're able to do from here is select specific uh, areas or parameters such as suspicious keywords and build in the ones that are relevant to our organization and what we aim to test. For example, I worked with an organization that had issues with Amazon gift cards. So what we could do is we could build in and edit Amazon into the memo field or gift card into the memo field, and we can search for those transactions and risk rate those as, as higher risk within the system. Another example is the high monetary value. The high monetary value is set at the top 2% of the ledger. However, we can edit and adjust this threshold to the top 1%, the top 5%, depending on the profile of our organization and, and the volume of transactions that could be in the high monetary category. The last example is end of reporting period. So this is set to the last 10 days of the year would indicate higher risk transactions because of cutoff issues. What we're able to do is edit this threshold to the last one day, the last half of the month. And that gives us the, the ability to, to skew this towards the industry that we're working in. So this has been an example of the general ledger in terms of understanding the control points and, and how they impact different areas within the analysis and build that visibility for the financial professionals. What we're also able to do is in our subledger areas, which we'll get into in the upcoming sessions, is how these control points can be leveraged to build out explainability around specific tests that are being performed, like unusual amount for the vendor. So if I go ahead and drill down into this particular control point here, we'll just go ahead and head into the high risk company here. And I can see how this overall risk is related to the other risk within the entity. As I scroll down, I can see where that selected entry falls as it compares to 
other entries within this particular data set. So this provides a lot of useful visualizations to show where the selected entry lies as it relates to the other data within the tool. This helps build that explainability around why this transaction was different and why it was selected by our system. And now it's up to the financial professional to determine its impact on the organization. As we scroll through here, you can see a number of these different visualizations to, to help support the look of or the explainability within our tool. A couple other aspects that are important to note is in our settings, in our support section, we have a knowledge base that provides detail around all these control points. It will tell you how the control point is operating, what it's looking for, and how the results are being calculated. In addition to knowledge base articles around the control points and how we've identified anomalies, we can also provide a holistic AI report, which digs into the specifics of the algorithm and how it's performing. Both of these are available to our professionals using the system to help them understand the results.